um, you know, some people I know, quite a few people actually, have recommended drinking raw milk because they can't drink pasteurized milk, right? And on drinking raw milk, they can drink, right? There's that intolerance just isn't there because the lactase is there. So this affects everything, and it will affect the next generation as well. You know, I was reading a book by um, um, a perinatal specialist, and he said now uh, chronic disease amongst kids now will, uh, is reaching epidemic proportions now. And in, I, I forget the statistics, but it was something crazy, like in 20 to 30 to 40 years' time, there'll be uh, 40 to 50% of children will be, will be born with some form of disease, autism, cancer, whatever it might be, some form, some form of deformities. This is what he's saying in a book. It's a big, fat book, this, called, this book called Brighton Baby, right? And et cetera. So, you know, uh, same with education. So that's health, right? What I mean by individual responsibility, it's your responsibility to, 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 to look after your health. Professionals never, uh, whether it's scholars in Islam, whether it's accountants or lawyers or health professionals, we have to realize that we can't delegate the responsibility to gain this knowledge to somebody else, thinking that everything will be taken care of. It won't, and it will affect us if we don't. And same, for example, that um, education. You know, education, when compulsory education was, was introduced in, um, in, in America, uh, I think in the 1850s or something, I, I can't remember the, the year now, but what happened is that the army was brought out, and children and parents were literally marched to the school. And literacy rates dropped. Literacy rates dropped. And the modern education system, John Taylor Gatto, it's a very good book, you should read it. It's uh, called Dumbing Them Down or Dumbing Us Down. Uh, he's a, he was a, a award-winning head teacher in America. He wrote this book. He, he essentially argues that modern schooling and the way it's run now, dumbs people down, right? It's not there to educate, it's there to provide a compliant workforce for an industrialized society. That's the purpose. You're a cog in an, in, an, in an economic system. That's the purpose of education. You know, when you go to school, you do learn how to be a good human being. Do you learn how to be, uh, you know, uh, trustworthy? Do you learn how to have social intelligence, emotional intelligence? Do you learn all these things? Do you learn wisdom? This used to be part of uh, the, the traditional education system. Wisdom and learning how to be a good person. In today, why did you go to university? Why did I go to university? I went to university so I could get a degree, so I could work, right? That's, it's all been confined to that. So um, even, even where I am in England, kids go to school at four years old, right? Noam Chomsky makes this point. He said, why, why is it four? Why is it four or even three sometimes? And it's because it's the earliest age that some psychologists have said that you can separate a child from his parents without permanently psychologically damaging that child not because it's the optimal age. And in fact, the UK, in terms of educational achievement, is well, well at the bottom of the ladder amongst developed nations in Europe, um, according to, I think it's UNESCO. Um, is it UNESCO? Not UNESCO, the, 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 the children's UNICEF, UNICEF, UNICEF. Um, and, and countries like Finland and the Scandinavian countries, they start education formally at seven years old. And they're well above. So it's not about, the UK isn't choosing to educate children at four because it's good for the child. It's got nothing to do with that. What it's got to do with is taxes, economy, money, right? And that has an impact on children. That has a huge impact, right? So, so these are just things, these are some examples I want to throw at you because when we're talking about knowledge, I want us to talk broadly. I want us to talk broadly and I want us to be critical thinkers. And actually, the, what I'm saying here, this affects every aspect of life, right? When you critique what you're, don't be consumers. Don't be just blind consumers who are there to eat and to drink and to lap up whatever any expert tells you. Never do that. Whether it's an Islamic expert, whether it's a, a legal expert. You know, I, I, I run a business and I deal with lawyers a lot and, and accountants and architects, right? I'm telling you, they make so many mistakes because I, I read their contracts. And I pick out their mistakes. And some of them, you know, I've said, you know, they, they're very careful because I, I read, basically. Right? And this is, by the way, this is another thing very important when it comes to knowledge. You have to read. You know, our, our one very unfortunate phase we're going through is that we're going through a phase where people don't want to read anymore. 
You know, it's perhaps just I've fallen into that because with, you know, with smartphones now. I used to, I remember as a kid, I used to, I used to cry if I didn't have a book next to me. Right? If I, I I'd finished all the books in the house, I didn't have anything, I, I used to be like running around the house looking for more books. Right? And, and I remember, you know, just 10 years ago, I used to have a pile of books next to my bed. Every, every night I would read some of these books, right? But now I don't, I, I've noticed I don't have any books now. I've, I'm trying to change that again. And the reason is because what I do is I reach for this. Right? I reach for that, right? And I open my WhatsApp and I start, and I start reading the news and I start reading. And it's a disaster. It's, it's a real disadvantage. You know, I used to read and now I'm reading, you know, stuff about Donald Trump. You know, or reading stuff about, I don't know, you know, even if it's Islamic stuff, most of it's unauthentic, non-authentic anyway. It's all, or, you know, talks with Nasheeds in the background, you know. So, um, you know, um, so reading, reading, reading is really, really important. And there's a book I want to, I'm, I'm skipping, I'm skipping kind of my, where is my bag? I'm skipping kind of um, what I'm going to be saying later on, but I think I'm running out of time anyway, so I might as well say things as I'm going along. There's a really good book that I think everybody should read. And it's called How to Read a Book, right? It's, it's, it really is very, very, it's a classic. This is, it's, it's, a very, it's, a, it's an amazing book. And honestly, the way he talks about how to read a book, there's so much in there, even that relates to how to read the Quran. Honestly, I've got, I've got, I've got notes there, and I've, I've got boxes, Quran, 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 Quran. And really, really, and he talks about four levels of reading. Basically, most people and all of us, including myself, we know how to read elementarily, in an elementary way. Right? But then there's other levels. Let me see if I can quickly give, get these levels out for you. So there's, there's a second level, which is inspectional reading. There's a third level called analytical reading. And there's a fourth level called synoptic reading. Right? And it's, it's good stuff. It's, really, it's, a, it's a very, very, very useful read. And everybody who's interested in reading should read this. Right? And then try and, basically what he's saying is that reading isn't passive. It's not there just for you just do this. You've got to grapple with the book. You've got to, you've got to make notes with the book. You've got, to answer, you've got to argue with the author. Right? This is one of the, one of the points. You've got to argue. You've got to de debate with the author. You've got to, you've got to underline. You've got to, you've, got to, you've got to be aggressive with the book. Right? And then there's higher levels of reading. And actually that's how we, how, that's how we should be approaching the Quran. We should be you know, even the Sahaba, I mean, don't think you can't make marks on the Qur'an. The Sahaba used to have marks on the, on the side. You can, right? The Sahaba used to have comments. You know, you should be grappling with the Qur'an. You should be asking questions. You should be underlining. You should be highlighting. You should be, you should be doing, yeah? What's the name of the Oh. Uh, there's two, but the main author is Mortimer Adler. Mortimer Adler. A-D-L-E-R. Um... So, yeah, just to, just to uh, the, 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 the point about um, reading, you know, you know, reading, um, you guys have come to this transformational leadership course, right? And there's nothing like reading for transforming you. You know, there's, you can get a lot from a course like this, but this course is a stepping stone for something else. After this, you need to have this individual concern, this individual responsibility to go away and to gain more knowledge. Even if you went to Medina University, even if you went to Azhar University, those, those, tr those students that do the best, by the way, they're not the ones that just attend the lectures and then go home. They're the ones that attend the lectures, see the lectures as a facility for, uh, or, or as a motivation or as a bit of a tool to help them do their own personal study. Right? You have to do your own personal study. Right? You, you, you can't rely on other people to tell you all the time read yourself and grapple yourself so i really really think that as part part of you know especially you guys you know who are going to be going back into your communities and, and affecting change you need to be equipped with, with with some of these tools you need to this love of learning if you don't have it you know um, ask allah to give it to you ask allah to give it to you. really it's it's a very very important skill and it's a really sh a, a big shortcoming if we're not reading as an ummah it's a it's a big handicap so we, we all need to have that. Okay. Um, so I think uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to leave this because it's going to take a long time. Right? And I think, you know, I think we all, um, we all kind of agree anyway on the broad thing. Shall we take a break? Okay, inshallah.